Thanks for joining me today. Um, we're going to look at number 21 in the Preparatory Melodies book by Max Potok. Um, <clears throat> this is one that a lot of people don't like, and part of it is it has some lip slurs in it, and it's soft. So I do not want you to think of this as an exercise, but it's difficult not to because when you're struggling with those physical things, uh, you know, it seems like, well, i got to get control here. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and play it for you. And and then make a couple, give you a couple of ideas that I hope will help you to um, uh, make progress uh, in your playing when you're working on this. And a couple of things about musical issues that, that can help. Sometimes when you focus on the music, you just relax the body and focus on the music, everything becomes a lot easier instead of trying for the physical control. So let's see if my, uh, if my medicine works for me today. I should have taken one more breath in there. That would have been made it easier for me. Um, <clears throat> here's an idea. Uh, when you're playing something that's repetitive, you have one note over and over again. You have a similar figure over and over again, like you do here. So I'm going to play the beginning again. Now, if I play that... Uh, that one wasn't a very good example. Let me try it again, but I'm going to play it very non espressione, right? I'm just going to play it, try and play it accurately. Now that sounds a little bit machine-like only not as precise as a machine. So you can't compete on that ground. So um, how can we make, how can we make a sound? Uh, how can we play a line that engages somebody who's listening? Here's a little idea for you. <clears throat> um, and then I'll give you a principle. The idea is uh, you are an Aborigine living in the outback of Australia. You have never had contact with, you know, the developed world. You live in your tribe in an isolated place. And you've never heard or seen a trumpet before. And then one day, when you're out hunting, you hear this sound that is strange and unusual. See, there's no basis for understanding it. That person <coughs> listening to that trumpet sound that they've never heard before it would, it would have an effect on them. That's music. <clears throat> it would have an effect, just the sound itself. Now, a principle. Let's add something to just the sound, a feeling of motion. And that's a basic musical principle. So how do we create motion? Well, we got crescendos and decrescendos here. And so that's, that's one way, is you have to have a sense when you're going, dee da dee dee da dee dee da dee dee da dee dee you know, it can get a little bit boring. But it should never be boring if it's, if it's going someplace. If the, the ear of the person listening can hear, oh, that's growing, or that's releasing, or that's gesturing. You see, that's what you want to do. So to me, this is a gesture and a line. Pretty cool in just you know, a few notes. So I'm trying here to give you a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about. Now, doing those things on the trumpet is difficult 
So remember the principle, keep it simple. So if you can play it with good sound and good control and not, and not worry about showing the line and gesture and direction, um, good. <clears throat> as soon as you get comfortable with that, then see if you can go beyond it. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck in just playing the trumpet for control. And I, I hear a lot of people that play that way. They, they, they sacrifice the expression for control. And that's sometimes that's a necessary choice on the trumpet. You got to get the job done. You got to play the notes. Now, if you're not if you're not playing an exposed uh, situation like a solo, like I'm doing right now on the microphone, uh, <clears throat> then then you can get away with a lot more stuff. If you're playing in a band, even in a brass quintet, chamber music, um, there are other people playing with you, and it kind of covers these things up. So this solo work is very very important in terms of refinement. And these are the elements, these are the things that separate the great players. And if you listen to any great players, especially, as I've said before, a piano, vocalists, string players, especially violinists, because the literature is so great, you'll hear so many great examples, so many people with different musical ideas and wonderful, wonderful music that you can get this, these, you can notice that what I'm telling you here is true. And that's what I want you to do. Um, so I hope you take this and not just work on it as an exercise. Now, if you need to do an exercise, that's fine. You can take an element of this. Guess what? There are elements of this in an exercise that I do every day. people think that's like crazy flexibility. No, it's not. I'm not doing very much. <clears throat> I've simplified it. We'll talk about this when we get into the how-to, <clears throat> if you will, the, the, the foundational things that every trumpet player has to be able to do and then how to develop your skill based on that foundation. What I'm doing is actually really simple and it's, and it's easy. If it weren't easy, I wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> I'd be struggling and you'd hear it, but, but you see how easy that is. So that makes it easier to play this, which is slower, and is the same notes, different pattern, but the same notes. So uh, I hope this gives you some encouragement. Uh, we all need encouragement now and then, that's for sure. So uh, I hope you find some encouragement here. And uh, have a good day, have a good practice, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.